church of Shaman. This is the day the Lord has made. And while that beautiful music uh, was playing, uh, you may have noticed that we have a special guest that has joined us today. And that is we have a bird that's flying around our sanctuary. And we have noticed that when the music plays, he really goes to flight. So uh, we have a, a little game we're going to play with the children who are watching today. We're going to call this game Count the Bird. So every time the bird flies past the camera, okay, I need everybody to count. And let's see how many times he'll do that for us today. I bet a lot. Uh, it fits perfectly for the Noah story that Tony's going to be talking about in just a moment. It's not a dove, it is a martin flying around. Uh, happy Memorial Day to you. Uh, this is a sacred day in our nation as we remember those that have given uh, the ultimate sacrifice uh, their very lives for freedom and for us, for you and me. Uh, it is a poignant uh, Memorial Day, I believe, uh, in the sense that uh, we have others that we are recognizing uh, during this season of pandemic. We remember all first responders, uh, firemen, policemen, uh, that have given their lives, and then and those in healthcare. Uh, thousands worldwide have died to care for you and me. Uh, maybe this is a morning that we can remember all of these in our prayers and through our worship together this morning. Uh, God has been good to us. Uh, we have been born in a nation to where we can come and, and freedom to worship. Uh, it costs uh, a lot. Uh, the cost is for freedom is in fact blood and sweat and tears. And thank God for that. And we do that today as uh, we remember the Lord's goodness to you and me. So uh, let's open, shall we, uh, in prayer, and then we're going to sing congregationally, uh, America the Beautiful. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you this morning for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who loved us so much that you would give your all. Thank you. May we, this day, because of what you've done, in recognition of that, give our all to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing together this morning, America the Beautiful. story and I want them to know everything that is happening. So I'm going to tell the story today and um, I, it begins with, and I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, I might 
have a helper. So we'll see if my helper shows up. This star oh, here I am. There you are, Dexter. I was afraid you were going to be late. I'm going to help. Okay, you help me. Okay, this story is about a man named Noah. Okay. Noah is an old man at the point we tell our story. You know how old he was? Um, 35. 500. No way! Yes, well. That's huh. old. It's very old. That's older than my mama. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's older than me. Wow. <laughs> And Noah had this really pretty little wife. Oh, yeah, she's cute. And so one day, Noah, the Bible says, and this is important to remember, the Bible says that Noah walked with God. And that means that Noah was always paying attention to what God had to say to him. And so one day God said to him, Noah, I'm going to wipe everything off the face of the earth except for you, your wife, your kids, and all of my creation. And therefore, I want you to build a boat. Noah had never built a boat before, but he took out his little hammer, and he got to work. And after a long, long, long time, he built this boat, which we call the Ark. Wow, does it have a motor? Nope, no motor at all. But he built it just like God told him to do. And God said, after you build this bo boat, Noah, you have to build it because something's going to happen. I'm going to send water. And you need to be able to float on the water. And all of this was new to Noah. He'd never seen anything like that, but God told him something else. Guess what? What? He said, I'm going to save all the animals. So if you're going to get and put on the boat two of every kind of animals. That's a lot of animals. That's a lot of animals. Can you imagine Noah going out and thinking, how am I going to get all those animals? How do you do that? Well, I'll tell you. God sent them. So when it came time, all of a sudden, the ark was done. Noah's watching what's happening, and all of a sudden, look, oh, here come the oh, animals. Wow. Do you know what those are? Yeah, those are giraffes. Those are giraffes. Yeah. And then little bitty things like this, hey. little mice. And hey. then animals like that. Hey, those are purple. Yes, purple hippopotamuses. Can you believe that? They're pretty. Uh-huh, with little birds on them. They even sent things like this. Oh, sweet little kitties. The sweet little kitties. This, which reminds me of you. Hey, eat, eat. Yeah, the monkey. Monkey, I like bananas. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> yes, but you know what? Stop it. They didn't eat each other. They didn't eat each other. And then some, uh, something for them to play hey, with. the hippos are going to step on those dogs. Okay, let me move the dogs right Okay. <laughs> and so those, all the animals came, and then all of a sudden, they really, they got on top of the ark. So here they are. Now they're, oops, there they are, in the ark. Okay. Let's pretend, okay? They yeah. went in, and... And Noah and his wife and all the people in his family, his, his three boys and their family. And then... Ooh, I mean, it stunk. Well, it probably did. And they were on there for a long time. Because then the rain came. Ooh, I hate rain. No. But you know what? They probably didn't like it either. And they never seen it rain like this. It rained and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. What? Uh-huh. No go-kart for 40 days? No go-kart for 40 days. You're stuck on a, bar on a boat. It stinks. And they stayed on that for 40 days and 40 nights, and then the rain stopped, and they were floating all over the earth. Ooh. They couldn't see anything but water everywhere. Oh, yeah. They stayed That's on that like boat. It's like being on a cruise. <laughs> sort of. And then, a God cruise, huh? Then they stayed there for a long time, and then one day, Noah, like a long time after they'd been on the boat, he said, okay, well, let's see what it's like outside. He sent out some birds, hey, some ravens. Hey, we got birds here. I see it. Oh, yeah, we do. They're flying around just like in the story of Noah. And they flew and they flew and they flew and they flew and they never came back and they couldn't find any place to land. So then Noah sent out a dove. <gasps> and then the dove, after a while, came back with, with an olive branch in its beak. And Noah said, it must be time. It must be we, the water has gone down and we can get off this boat. Finally! Finally, and the clouds went away, and the, the waters, which had been way up, started to go back, and they were landing on dry ground like this. And so Noah came out of the boat, and his wife came out of the boat. Hey, they look, they look good. They look good. They look the same, don't they? They do. Uh-huh. All the animals came out. The monkeys were so excited. They started eating some bananas. The puppy dogs were running everywhere. All of a sudden, they noticed there was some... Dolphins or porpoises in oh, the yeah, water. Oh, yeah, these are tricks. Uh-huh. The hippo said, I'm going to go get in that water. And the giraffe said, I'm going to run away. <laughs> He's funny. He's funny. And then God said, 
Noah, I want you to always remember I'm never going to do a flood again to destroy the earth. And this is how you're going to know that. Oh, a rainbow! We put a rainbow up in the sky. Yeah. Every time we look at the rainbow, we can remember that God is faithful to his promise. And he will never flood the world again. And he always takes care of us. Sometimes he gets close. <laughs> but, but no, never again by a flood. God is always here with us. Yeah. And that's the story. Dexter, I want to say thank you. You're welcome. Thanks thank for you. helping me tell this story. I like helping. Uh -huh. You are. You're a really great helper. All right. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. We can remember that God is always faithful. He always takes care of us. He is always there for us. He watches over us. And he's true to his word. And I think during this time, that's so important for us to remember. Kids, you need to remember it. Adults, we remember it too. If you're feeling a little bit nervous or tired of being inside, remember Noah. He didn't get tired. He just hung in there. And sure enough, God was faithful. Well, amen. I think we have been also, uh, thank you, Dexter. I think we have been liberated from the bird has been liberated. I think he's gone. Uh, we opened up, we have a breezeway that opens up and goes over to our educational building uh, that uh, I think he escaped out that way. Just like the raven and the dust. Just like Noah and the ark. Well, okay, this morning uh, we want to take a moment to pray uh, for needs in our congregation and around the world. Uh, uh, Mary, uh, uh, Melvin, I, I just read it. Uh, you had an incident in your family last night hazardous situation where there's a shooting and uh, somewhere uh, but your, your granddaughter I think was protected and spared from that uh, thank the Lord God at work in very real and important ways uh, we pray for today for those uh, families that uh, have remembrance of those family members who gave their life uh, in foreign wars and that's, what we, that's who we uh, remember during Memorial Day. Uh, God bless you for the giving of your family and your loved ones. Uh, we also want to pray for the sick and the infirm, uh, particularly those that are suffering uh, from COVID. Uh, we want to pray for our nation as we are trying uh, to open. Uh, it's certainly, uh, there's no uh, right or perfect or less than perfect way, but we just got to find our way through this, I guess, and do the best we can. And uh, let's pray for our leaders. It must be really tough uh, to be in government right now. Uh, we need to pray that God will give them wisdom uh, and discernment as to what best to do. So you have a prayer list that we made available on Facebook Live. Please print that out and take it uh, with you if you would. Uh, Reba Carter, uh, once again, I can report back to you. She's doing very well. In fact, she's in rehab now. And that's one step closer, uh, apparently. Uh, she should be coming home. We're thinking uh, maybe uh, this week we will, we will see. Uh, we receive our offering at this time. Uh, and so I'd ask you, if you would, if you have your envelope and your stamp and your gift, if you would now uh, take your gift, please, and put it in the envelope with the stamp on it and mail it. And you will find it on the website, shawnfpc.com. Uh, all the information needed there is for the mailing address and, and how to give. So let's take a moment to pray for these needs and for our offering, uh, if we may. Father God, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness of meeting with us in this place. Thank you for worship and praise for another uh, day of life and joy of service. Uh, we do pray today, God, that you will be uh, with uh, those that are suffering from uh, this coronavirus we pray for families. We pray for those uh, where they've been affected. Heal them, we pray. Uh, we thank you for Mary's uh, daughter, that you protected her. We thank you, God, uh, for families uh, on Memorial Day that have loved ones that uh, they can remember, they know of. Uh, this church over across the street in our Family Life Center, there is a memorial of sorts of the many men and women that have uh, over the years have served faithfully our nation. Uh, their pictures are on the wall. Uh, Lord, we, we remember those faces today, and those people out of Shaman Baptist over a hundred years and fighting various wars. I was praying particularly for those uh, that have given their lives for us. Now, Father, we pray for the ministry of the Word of God today 
We pray that you will speak to us in the preaching of the word. Uh, Lord, we want to hear you, and then we want to respond obediently, because we know that this is the only way for there to be life for us. Uh, so may we hear, and then may we respond. We pray in Jesus' name. So, uh, Tony is going to uh, read a passage of scripture. I invite you, if you would, uh, to open your Bibles once again to the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 7 this morning, uh, beginning in verse 13. And Tony's going to read down through verse 16. Join with us as we hear the word of God this morning. Tony? On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. And that last uh, sentence will be our focus this morning in our lesson. Uh, two important realities that I want you to note uh, as an introduction this morning in the story of Noah and the ark. First of all, I want you to note that it was Noah who built the door. Uh, there was only one door of that ark, and it must have been a humdinger one. Uh, but it was Noah who built the door. But the second thing I want us to note from our passage this morning is that while Noah may have built the door, it was the Lord who shut them in. It was the Lord who shut the door. The scriptures uh, teach us in this passage. And you may say to yourself this morning, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound too good to me. I don't like being shut in. We may think uh, today in the circumstances that we find ourselves in, of being shut in and shut up and shut out. And we may think to ourselves, I think I would rather have something else to happen to me and for me in, our, in my life. Well, I want us, though, just to think for a moment and ask ourselves this question. What if, in fact, the Lord shutting you and me in in this current circumstance? What if? In fact, this is in fact a special, divinely constructed season that the Lord has brought us to for our salvation, for some, for our growth, certainly for all. Well, that's what we want to consider this morning. There are three lessons I want to just highlight for us today. First of all, I want us to uh, note, for instance, in verse 3, of chapter 8. Uh, there's a marvelous passage there with it where it says that when the waters began to recede after the flood, that it tells us the manner in which the waters receded by saying that they receded steadily. Uh, some of your translations have at that point the waters receded slowly, a bit by bit by bit. Now I think there's a lesson in that somewhere. The waters receded steadily. And this is what I want to point out with you to you this morning. If God guides your steps, then steadily is always blessedly. Steadily is always blessedly. If that is in fact the way that the, the place that the Lord has brought us and what he's doing for your life and mine. I know this, the best kind of change in life is the kind that comes to us slow and steady. I put this graphic in your sermon notes on Facebook Live. Uh, you may have noticed how God grows his garden. And in that graphic, uh, there, there's nothing surprising here. Uh, well, how does God grow his garden? Well, this is how he does it. He takes his seed. He takes his hand. He puts the seed down in the soil. Then he comes and he waters it and then lovingly allows the sunshine to grow upon the seed. And then the soil begins to warm. 
And then through time, there's a sprout. And then as time goes on, the little sprout begins to grow. And before you know it, you have something glorious of God. I want you to know, it was not add water and mix. It was not instantaneous. It was something that happened slow, and it happened steadily. Did you know that that is, in fact, how spiritual growth happens in the spiritual life? In fact, the Bible speaks about this a lot. It uses metaphors in Scripture to talk about Christian growth. And so, for instance, we find the metaphor of the farmer, which is one of the uh, favorite ways that Scripture defines uh, spiritual growth, of sowing and reaping, and how it is that the seed, it slowly sprouts to the sky, and then the crop will eventually come, and then eventually you have the grain. It talks about another metaphor that the Lord uses of growth is that of a child growing up. And so it speaks about beginning with milk and then later there through growth there will become solid food until we become from glory to glory we are changed into the image of the only begotten of the Father. Paul likes to use the metaphor of the runner and we know that the running that he describes here is not a sprint. There are a lot of sprinters who can run real fast, but that's not the kind of runner that the Lord describes in the spiritual life. We are runners in the long run of life until, in fact, the scriptures tell us, as Paul did, that we will eventually come to a place where we finish the race of life. It is a long run marathon of life. Uh, we are farmers, we are children, we are runners. Steadily. That word in the Hebrew, I looked it up this week, an interesting word study if we would do it. The word, it means at its core, it means to come. It means to walk. And it means to go. And that is, in fact, the picture of our Christian journey. The best growth that happens in our life, it happens from the growth that comes slow and it comes steady. I mentioned to someone here a couple days ago when they asked me, how is it that I think the next six months to a year is going to progress for us as a congregation uh, in the midst of this pandemic? And this is what I said to them. Oh, I, we're going to make progress. <laughs> progress week by week. And this is how I envision the progress happening. It's going to happen like this. Three steps forward. And then we're going to have to take two steps back. But then we're going to take three more steps forward. And then we may have to take two steps back. But then when we come back, we're going to take three steps forward again. Three steps forward, two steps back. I just want to note, you to note this morning, that that is, in fact, progress. We're moving forward, slow and steady growth in the Christian life. You know, that is true, in fact, for your life today. The best things that are happening to you right now are not going to come suddenly. Right after Tony and I got married, she probably doesn't remember this. I'm glad she doesn't because I was kind of an odd human being that she married. But as we were looking at our future, as I was thinking about next steps for us as a couple and for our family, I found a little saying uh, in a magazine somewhere and I cut it out and I framed it and put it on our dresser drawer. Uh, and in that little graphic, there was a picture of a turtle. And then there was this saying uh, that says this, it's not the leap at the start, but it's the steady pace that gets us there. And you know what? That's how we've got you to be telling in our life. I want you to know there was no sudden instant anything in life. The best things, it says in these waters of Noah, that they receded 
bit by bit by bit, steadily. And that's a lesson to learn for you and me. Number two, we learn uh, not only if God guides your steps, that steadily is always blessedly, but number two, we learn if God be your help, the chaos without need not crush you within. And now we go to Genesis chapter 1. We've already looked uh, several weeks ago at the parallels between Genesis 8 and Genesis 1. And so we find that what the Lord did in the creating of the world of chaos, He does almost as an analogy in Genesis 8, where after the flood, He's recreating the world. Noah found himself in a place of chaotic, uh, outdoors. Uh, the world found itself in a place of chaos. Can I say this about many of you today, right now, in your life? Your life could well be described now as being chaotic. Nothing is as it were. Nothing uh, is in any sort of organization. Things that you have trusted upon and lived by, things that brought you some sense of stability and order have all been pulled out from under you and you are in a chaotic moment. I just want you to know this from our lesson. If that's where you find yourself today, you are in a really good spot. And I want to tell you why. Because it's one of the great lessons of the scripture is that while we may be intimidated uh, by chaos, for God, chaos becomes the raw material out of which He builds everything that's good and wonderful. And so where are you right now in your life? Where are we right now uh, in our nation? Uh, and in the church of Jesus Christ. It's really chaotic. I want you to know, I cannot wait to see how it is that God is going to step into these circumstances that we share together, that you have personally in your life, and how it is that God is going to make something wonderful out of something that seems so dark. Right now. Well, it's a lesson to be learned uh, in our passage this morning. Well, if God guides your steps steadily, is always blessedly, if God be your help, the chaos without need not crush us within. And then our final lesson this morning is this if God be your God, there's an open up in every shut in life. And that is a fact. And so, let me give you some examples of this. We have today, in the midst of this shut up, an opportunity. Various ones. First of all, we have another opportunity for gratitude to God. Gratitude. Thankfulness. Praisefulness. For all that God has blessed us with. How he has protected us. How he has kept our, his hand upon you and me and our family. We're in the midst of a shop. But what an opportunity for gratitude. Things I know now, now, today, that I have realized that I have taken for granted. Can I share a few of these with you real quickly? How about this? I am grateful this morning for the ability that God has given us in the past to open up a door without ever thinking twice about it. Do you remember those days? Things that I know that I took for granted once, picking up in the store a head of broccoli and just to pick the thing up and to put it in my grocery basket. I think back to those times and I realize I took that for granted. How about going to San Marcos <laughs> and having lunch after church? How about walking into Starbucks and getting a coffee? How about going to church on Sundays and Sunday nights with 
Wednesday mornings, Wednesday nights. How about Sunday school and sitting in a room together with brethren and sisters and, and loving each other and supporting one another? I think I may have taken that for granted. How about breakfasts at Waffle House with the guys and sitting at table for an hour or two almost every week and just encouraging one another? And sharing and opening our lives together as men. How about Dairy Queen blizzards? Been thinking about those the last couple of weeks. Think about those. How about going to Mercedes Benz Stadium for a soccer game? Do you remember those days? Did you take them for granted? May have. I know I had. And this becomes a moment in the shut up. For you and me to take a little stock, to take an assessment, where are we in our life? An attitude of gratitude. Well, uh, not only that, uh, we we know that we have another opportunity, not only for gratitude, but a, an opportunity for growth. That's why why we're here today. That's why you've tuned in because we can either go through this. Or we can grow through this. That's what's offered to you and me at this moment. We have an opportunity for growth in the shut-up that we find ourselves in. And so from Lord of the Rings, there is a scene, famous scene. It's where Frodo and Gandalf, they are uh, hiding out in a cave together. And everything is just going wrong for them. Frodo particularly is in despair. He's carrying that ring with all of its awesome responsibilities and all the trial and difficulty that's come his way because of it. And in that scene, Frodo looks at Gandalf, and this is what he says to him. He says, Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time to which Gandalf looks back to him and says this, So do I, Frodo, and all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All have to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you and me. There may be some of you this morning where you're sitting in a cave somewhere and you are fretting about the circumstances that have come to your life and you as Frodo, you may be saying this to yourself, I wish this would not have happened. I wish this thing that has come to me never would have come. I wish this trial that I find myself in, I wish it would have never happened. I wish I did not find myself. And the circumstance, and the place that I find myself in now. One of the things that we must remember in this time of being shut up, this, that this may be, in fact, a time that has been given for you and me. It is an opportunity that God has given us to grow in the Christian life. I want you to say something with me, if you would. It's a phrase that I have memorized just about. I've said it so many times in life. Would you say this phrase? Just look to someone next to you. And I want you to say this. Tell me you can say it to me. Okay? Repeat this after me. Although you cannot go back. Although you cannot go back. And make a brand new start. Make a brand new start. You can start now. You can start now. And make a brand new end make a brand new end. And that's a fact. Did you know that the most important thing in life is not how you start. The stars pale in comparison to the importance of how it is that we end in life. And I want you to know you may can't go back and make a brand new start, but I know this. You can start today and with the help of God, you can make a brand new end. Well, that brings
brings us to one final opportunity in this shut up time. Opportunity for gratitude, an opportunity for growth. But we also find, in fact, what is the most important opportunity of all, and that is an opportunity for God. For God. You have come to this place in your journey and may have brought you today to a place of extreme disappointment, tears, frustration, and trial. Listen to me today. If that is where you are, you are in a really good spot right now. And I'll tell you why. Because it is exactly in that condition of life. What an opportunity that you have today for God to come into your life, for you to ask Him to be your Savior and your Lord. You may be tuning in today and you know, only you do. You have never come to that place of commitment to Jesus Christ. Well, what an opportunity God has given you for God. For God to come to take the tears and to wipe them from your face. God, to come today and to take you by your trembling hand and to lift you up a place of God. For God to come then, to embrace you, to love you, to give you life and hope and strength, an opportunity for God to set you back again on a road of success and of life. Well, we find these marvelous lessons today. We're all shut up in this time of pandemic and trial and difficulty. But oh, what an opportunity that God has given. An open up in every shut up of life. Our Father, I thank you this morning for that great promise that there is, that Lord, if you are the one that has shut us in at this moment, that God, we can trust you for the journey that is before us. Receive our lives, I pray today, especially for those who have yet to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. I pray that today, that this will be the most important day, the most joyous day of their future. May this be the day that they find you. I pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Tony, our bird has returned. Yes, he has. I think he likes us. Um, but we're going to pray for that bird before we leave today. Yes, uh, and we're going to sing together, and he's going to start flying when we do. One final hymn. Join us. And the bird this morning as we dismiss and sing, only trust him, only trust him now. Let's sing it again.
to my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room, there's room in my heart for you today. I pray that be your prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Until we meet again next Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, Charlotte Baptist Live on Facebook. May God.